Hey, everybody, Jen Hatmaker here, your host of the For the Love podcast. You guys, welcome to the show. Um, 2022 is almost over, and we wanted to have this like for the love of ending the year with a bang series. You know, there's always the start the year with a bang, but I I love this idea of finishing strong. So, because I think the this like pressure to just always start something new, um, is kind of a lot and invented. Um, and so sometimes it feels like, Oh God, I'm stuck. And I don't know how to get unstuck just because the calendar says January. Um, and so I want to talk about this idea about feeling stuck because I think a lot of us have felt that way before, or if not, we will eventually just live longer, right? Whether it's in our careers or our relationships or our bodies. I mean, just, you know, you name it. I, I 100% felt that like, paralysis of inertia before where I don't quite know how to get out of where I'm at or I do, but those mechanisms seem too far down the road to access. Um, and I think that's really common. I, I don't think that's an outlier experience at all. So our guest this week can and does speak to what it is like to feel that stuckness um, rather than shaping the kind of life that we want, you know, where circumstances seem to just be like, we're in a tidal wave of them. Um, so today, you guys, we have on Britt Frank. So Britt is a trauma specialist um, who is just, well, you'll see. Um, this wonderful combination of personally experienced, her story is like really hard, um, saucy and spicy smart and practical. Like she was just kind of hitting all my buttons today. Like this is the way that I like to think that I like to be spoken to, that I like to be led around mental health and recovery. Um, we talk about science for me, this episode pulled all the levers of encouragement and inspiration, relief, comfort, um, because we're not stuck because we're lazy or unmotivated or crazy. She puts that to bed really fast. So Britt personally spent years grappling with like chemical and behavioral addictions, um, eating disorders, depression, OCD, PTSD, uh, just a host of things um, that kept her from just literally living the life she wanted and being who she wanted to be. And so she kind of set out to found some answers. Um, and discovered kind of on her way to, quote, normal, which, by the way, she concluded there's definitely no normal, um, just a handful of just information and processes and that are incredibly life-giving. So she had a book come out um, in March on this very topic. And it's called the science of stuck. And I'm just telling you, this is a field guide. Here's the cool thing about it. Um, at the point in her life, when Brit was addicted to drugs and suffering from an eating disorder and a personality disorder, um, as she mentioned this later, she just didn't need a stack of books telling her what to do. We can't, I can't read 12 books to figure out each and everything. She said what I needed, what she said was I needed one book that would give her like the next simple, digestible bullet point step to begin to claw her way out. And she couldn't find it. So instead, she became a trauma specialist and then wrote the very guide that she needed herself. How incredible is that? You're going to um, love this. You're going to love this interview. Um, but she just grabs us by our little hands and she like normalizes our experiences. She tells us what not to worry about in the early stages. Like we're going to push that 10 miles down the road. Um, the, the early stages are actually simple and attainable. Anyway, I just thought a million, a million things she said in this interview. I was like, huh, that is really good. She is a really good at this. Um, and so I'm just delighted to introduce her to you if you don't already know her. Um, so please enjoy this insightful and encouraging and empowering conversation with the spicy and delightful Britt Frank. 
Um, Britt, I'm so delighted to meet you and having kind of been newly exposed to you and your work, I just, we just knew for sure we need to have her um, not just on this podcast, but in this series. And so thank you so much for saying yes to this. Thank you so much for having me. This is going to be a fun one, a juicy one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, here we are all trying to end the year, like kind of, well, sorry to use this, but unstuck. And um, I I know I end up having this craving. I'm getting ahead of myself right now, but I, I know whereas a lot of people start the year, they're like, okay, what is, what's my... How do I move forward in a healthier way this year? I like to end the year. I mean, I like to go, um, I finished this year stronger or wiser or kinder or smarter than when I started it. And that's kind of where you and I are locating this conversation here at the tail end of 2022. So, okay. I have uh, told my listeners a little bit about you already um, and exactly why we have asked you to be sort of our guide here at the, on this particular episode. Um, So you, which one thing that I really love about you is that you're very candid about some of, about your life, about what you have struggled with and through the ways that you have suffered, um, all of it. And then all the way now you're a trauma specialist. So there's a lot left out there. (laughs) It's like you had some hard things and now you're a trauma specialist. So can you, um, can you take us back just a little bit, if you don't mind for my listeners who are new to you and just tell us a little bit about your story and the kind of the before part of your story than where we are right now. Sure. No, the good things happen, the bad thing happens, and here we are. Yay, go. Yes, yeah, so so that's the cliff notes. Mm-hmm. I fell into this really interesting category that I think a lot of women fall into in that my life did not look like it was bad growing up up. There was no high level looking trauma. I wasn't raised in a war-torn country. I was not subject to Mm -hmm. oppression. I was not, you know, black and blue all day. And a lot of people, myself included, think if you do not fall into the category of high level, easy to see trauma, Mm -hmm. then you're fine. You're fine. Anything that's wrong with you is you. What's wrong with you? Everything is fine. Mm -hmm. Everything was like not fine. Like everything, there are so many ways to be wounded and bruised besides that stuff. And Mm -hmm. so there's this huge category of other stuff, which could include something as minor as having boundaryless, unskilled, well-meaning parents that just didn't have like what was needed to give you what you needed. And that doesn't mean they're bad, but that does that's going to have an impact. I also had childhood sexual abuse and some other high-level trauma things that I still didn't think were were trauma. I, I had a therapist at 27 say, you know, Brett, that wasn't actually normal what you grew up with. I'm like, wait, you know, not everybody runs around in a house like with porn on TV and no boundaries wow. and nakedness. Yeah. And sorry if that's TMI, but that's what No, it was. it's not. Thank you for sharing because I mean, as you know, we're gonna have plenty of people listening today who just are hearing you say that and it's like a glass of water because that was their experience too. And it has maybe never been validated. So thank you for just putting it all in the pool. Like Here there's the pool with all yeah. the key in it. Yes. Yeah. That's Even right. things like, you know, a parent who doesn't physically abuse a child, but having a father leer at you, having a father comment on your body, having mm. a parent who is constantly comparing you to another family member in terms of your development and puberty, all of these things, and people don't know this, will mm. register in the same way as other types of trauma. Again, I'm not comparing them, but the impact is very similar. And so when you have all this confusion and distress, distorted parent-child roles and boundaryless behavior, eventually that's going to sort of combine into a big ball of who am I? What am I? I have no idea what is going on. So I'm just going to attach to the first things I can find. And so for me, that was mm-hmm. sex and love addiction. Yeah. People ask, well, why didn't you start with drugs? I'm like, because drugs weren't available until I was older. So you start with what's around you, whatever's Good around point. you, you latch on to. And mm-hmm. I did. Mm-hmm. Toxic relationships, domestic yeah. abuse, you know, just like an, a, a really like Dateline NBC level, you know, <laughs> Yeah. mass of dysfunction. But what I learned and what my message is, is you're not crazy. I was not mm. crazy. My behaviors weren't good, but there's no such thing as a crazy person. If you mm. look at everyone up close 
everything always makes sense in context. Even if you don't know what that means, even if you don't know what that is, and when you stop shaming yourself and you start mm-hmm. committing to, hey, I'm not like subscribing to my behaviors. I'm not saying these should stay, but I'm not going to shame myself. I'm going to go, wow, mm-hmm. this is an interesting adaptation to an injury. And okay, I'm not crazy. I make sense. My stuff makes sense. My burnout makes sense. My depression makes sense. For me, mm-hmm. my meth addiction made sense. Mm-hmm. And what a beautiful message to know that we're not crazy. No one is. Mm. I mean, it's just a real relief to hear because uh, as you know, when you are trapped inside um, some of those coping behaviors, which is what those are, this is just how to get through the day, how to be a survivor, um, you know, how to wrap your little heart and mind in some sort of protective bubble, be it toxic or not, um, from feeling things that aren't meant to be felt for the, from feeling pain, you know, um, that's, it's a lonely place and the possibility of sinking into like self-loathing and shame is up. Uh, so high a hundred percent maybe so can you talk about in your story um parse your story forward a little bit for us so like these were the things that you reached for um out of trauma and and then how what what did the beginning stages look like of sort of clawing your way out what was Mm. that like the good and the bad because that is a it's super challenging place to be when you're like, I'm going, something needs to be different. Um, but the very behaviors or choices that you need to reach for are the ones that feel so far away that just feel so almost impossible. Far away. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, really, they do feel impossible. Yeah. If you told me 10 years ago, even that anything that I have now was possible, I'd be like, like, no, like F off. Mm. I would have given you the finger and wanted mm. to smack you. I wish that I had this very clean, neat. This was my life. Here was my burning bush moments. And mm. like the clouds parted and I had this insight and then I changed. I think that story. And I think that's beautiful for people who have that story. And like, mm. you go girl, like, yay. Mm-hmm. I think that story keeps a lot of us stuck because I we agree. keep waiting for this insight, this like lightning bolt, mm. this shit. And it wasn't like that for me yeah. at all. I- I don't think it's like that for most people, but that story is rewarded in our culture that like magic moment. And it just, you pivot on a dime and just like that, you're healthy. That story gets a lot of traction because people like it, but I don't find that to be the truest story for most people. Right? Me either. And I sit in front of people all day, every day talking about their stories. I have not actually seen that story like mm. in my work. I have not seen that. Yeah. St- I've heard it. I've seen it in movies and it's a yeah. great story. I'm not saying mm. it's not real. I, it's just not mine. And I'm guessing it's, it's not a lot of people's. Yeah. It's so much messier than that. It's it I'm going to take two steps forward and then I'm going to take a hundred back and then I'm going to go sideways. And what people sometimes don't realize about my story is like, I was still semi-functional. Like I went to college and then I went to work and I went to grad school and it wasn't like I was a mess and then I was healthy. It was, I was sort of doing both things at the same time until I had a breakdown, not a spiritual awakening. I will call it what it was, a breakdown. And I had to take Mm -hmm. a year off to just collect the pieces of my Mm -hmm. burned down life and go, okay, Mm -hmm. we should probably do something new. That was when, if there was like a, here's the moment, it Mm -hmm. was the relationship had ended. I had lost everything. I had the clothes on my back in my car. It's so dramatic. And my dog in my front seat going, what do we do? And um, yeah. it was, okay, time time to, to move. It wasn't time to change. It wasn't, it was mm. just like, take another step. Don't uh-huh. die. If you're, if you're yeah. still breathing, you're, there's another step to be taken. So take it. I don't know where mm. I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. Just go. Because the second you move in any direction, even if it's the wrong direction, you're no longer inert. You're no longer stuck. So if you take Mm. the wrong step, you can take that feedback and use it. So it's more like Mm. a leapfrog. It's a very long winded Mm. way to say, I didn't have a pivotal moment. It was a long series of unfortunate events with some moments that kept me inspired to not die. And I kept going. I appreciate you saying that, that it's, this is not tidy. Mm -mm. And it's not necessarily overnight. And, and because I know I have been there, 
and I know my community too, has been in that place of a, of inertia and where being stuck is so paralyzing. It's so demoralizing and overwhelming. And so I appreciate the validation that you just gave around getting stuck that it can and does happen to a lot of us. And, and your position is that getting stuck isn't because we're just lazy or we're just unmotivated to create any change or something's innately wrong with us. We're just other people have got that thing in them and we just don't have it. Um, and so if we can stay right there a little bit before we sort of move forward in those, what steps you took and what that, what that created in your life, let's talk about that stuck place for a minute. Um, in your experience now, cause you've wrapped a lot of education um, and experience both personal and professional around this idea. Why, um, why do you, th- what are the main reasons that we get so stuck? Even when everything is so sad, like we don't want to be there. We don't want to be in that place. That place is off. And so an outsider would look in and just go move, leave, change it. Quit doing that. Stop taking those. Um, quit drinking, whatever the thing is. Um, why? Why is the stuck gear so hard to get out of? And if you look at people who do quit the thing, start the thing, stop the thing, there's an equal amount of unhealthy, unhappy on that side as there is on the people who are spinning. So it's like, what are we missing? Hmm. It's not in the just do the thing or just stop doing the thing that we find our happiness. And, hmm. you know, we get stuck because there's this fundamental belief that we are broken and that we are hmm. damaged. And again, most people don't have access to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people telling the same story from every walk of life. That's true. We all have imposter syndrome. We all feel like we were sent out of the factory with a few settings missing. And we all feel disconnected and isolated and lonely to a degree, hmm. no matter how shiny our lives look like. And this thing about feeling whole, in order to feel whole, and this is not a popular message, but it's true. In order to be a happy person, you need to be a whole person. But in order to be whole, we have to deal with the less than shiny things about ourselves. And wow. I will say this till the day I die, an uncomfortable comfortable truth is always better to the shiny lie because the shiny lie will always leave you feeling empty and either you're successful and miserable or you're addicted and unhappy and miserable. Both of those require something. What's the something? It's what's really going on for you. What do you actually like? What do you actually not like? What about your life works? What about it hasn't worked? And a lot of us, myself included, want to defend our origin Mm. years to the death. I had a good childhood. My parents meant well. I'm sure Mm. you did. And I'm sure they did. Nevertheless, life is hard and no Mm. one gets out of puberty unscathed. Like, I don't care how healthy and awesome your parents were. Nobody gets out of birth to 18 without a few dings. So let's Mm. let's deal with them. Let's make it less scary. The word trauma freaks people out. Let's just that's why I use the word stuck. Like, let's just deal Mm -hmm. with where are you bruised, whether or not you think you have a right to your pain. I see this Mm. a lot with stuck. My Mm. life was so good. I don't have a right to complain. It's like, yeah, you do. You, you actually, like you not dealing with your wounds doesn't help anyone. You are mm-hmm. of no service to the world, your family, your community, or your friends by ignoring your pain. Perspective, uh, useful, yeah. comparison, not. Mm. It's just also true. And I'm I'm just thinking through like, it, it's kind of, you're holding up like a mirror to me for both um, behaviors that I have done before, like ways in which I was unwilling to face that. And even some now, a couple of them, like right now, and the shiny lie is tempting. It's tempting. It feels when you're looking at it, I could have this true thing and say it out loud and do th- this is going to require some work. This is going to, this is going to be mess. And I have this, which is a little bit of the f- way better version of it, like way propped up. This is polished. Um, I'm tempted to look at this and just go, well, this is just easier, but it's not like the costs are on the back end. Well, you know, where do you want to pay? You want to pay on the front end or you want to pay on the back end? With like, which one? Cause yes. you're going to pay. I mean, these aren't neutral, right? Like it's not neutral to just stick our heads in the sand and decide not to deal. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. While the overriding sentiment for the holidays is one of cheer, there can be many reasons why this just isn't the case for all of us. Seasonal stresses, tricky feelings, family dynamics, grief, so much can complicate this time of year and does. 
and there's no user manual for navigating all of this. So when things are sideways and feeling so far from joyful, it can be really hard to know what to do next, which lever to pull, how to keep moving forward. But here's the thing, it's okay to feel this way and you're not alone. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and then learn productive and super useful coping skills, which makes therapy like better help the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. Not just during the holidays, but really any time of year. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash for the love. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash for the love. I'm looking at you last minute shoppers who might be feeling stuck or even overwhelmed by what to get family and friends this year. So I have an idea for you and it's called StoryWorth. It's this really cool company that's all about story. It's an online service that helps you and your loved ones preserve precious memories and stories. It's really unique. Every week, StoryWorth emails your person a thought-provoking question of your choice from this huge pool of options. Maybe something you've never thought to ask, like what's the bravest thing you've ever done? Or if you could see the future, what would you want to know? Stuff like that. And then after a year, StoryWorth compiles all those questions and stories, including photos they can upload, into this gorgeous book everyone can share for generations. It's just really special. I um, love StoryWorth. It's such a thoughtful and meaningful gift, and it's all about connection. I did story worth with my mom for an entire year. And all of us now have a bound copy of all the stories she told us. You guys, we learned so many things about our mom that we had never ever heard in all these years. It's just, it's an, it really is incredible. So go to storyworth.com slash for the love and save $10 on your first purchase. So that's storyworth.com slash for the love to save $10 on your first purchase. This is deeply like autobiographical question. Um, Do you find that one of the key barriers to being really honest about our stuff is that we get a little bit stuck in blaming somebody else? Well, this person hurt me. This person betrayed me. This person made choices that upended my life. This person harmed my body. Pick the thing, you know, like what? And and frankly, in a lot of cases, it's true. Somebody did hurt you. Somebody did harm you. Somebody did hurt your body. Like somebody did break your heart. That's not untrue. Mm -hmm. But this thing of like, I would be better if you had done better. It has a shelf life, right? (laughs) It, that one's such a tough one. And I am very mindful of not victim blaming. And that's why I say, listen, I have childhood sexual abuse. I was in a domestically violent, abusive relationship, infidelity, physical, like all the things. I am really like captain of the don't blame the victim team. However, and I'm only going to speak for myself because I don't yes. want all the angry DMs flooding my inbox. Yes. Part of the reason that I stayed stuck was because as long as someone was worse than me, I didn't have to deal with my own shit. My partners who physically harmed me is very Mm -hmm. easy to point and go, like you just said, if you hadn't done X to me, I would be fine. If you Mm -hmm. had just not not cheated on me, I would be fine. And it's like, that's that. Did I deserve that? No. Did I ask for that? Of course not. However, someone else acting in whatever way does not change you. And Mm. I hid under a blanket of, um, it's not my fault. This person did this to me and this person did that to me. And there's a fine line between honoring your pain Mm. and then using blame to avoid, like no matter how bad things have happened to you, you still have stinky parts of your closet that need to be excavated and cleaned out. And that's a hard sell. I was so mortally wounded. 
when my therapist was like, well, Brett, you know, you have a few things too. Clutches at pearls. How dare oh, you? Same. I was How told my therapist, you? I don't pay you to talk to me like that. That's what yes. I told my therapist. Like, no, ma'am. <laughs> no, I am here for you to be on my side and be like, yeah. everything you're feeling is true. And you are a princess. Like yes. none of this has anything to do with you. <laughs> it's I love true. That so much. It's, uh-huh. I call it the princess problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I wanted to have my crown and my queen and my throne and do it for me because I don't want to do, which really comes down to, I wanted somebody to come rescue me from my own. And this is not a spiritual, this isn't about like state, like this uh-huh. is about practically as yeah. adult women, no one is coming to save us from our inside truth. Right. Like nobody can do it. No amount of money can do it. No amount That's of true. intimate partner love can do it. No passion and purpose and meaning in yeah. your work can do it. Like huh, this sounds so morbid, but it's true and it's helpful. No one's coming to save you from your pain, except you. Like that's your job to dig it up, look at it, share it with safe people who you trust and then metabolize it and get it out of you. So we can actually live the lives that we say we want. It's the only way. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. Mm -hmm. And it's not an easy way and Mm -hmm. it's not a fast way. And so I'm thinking about um, the person listening who is they've they're they're sunk they're sunk for fill in the blank it it could be self-inflicted wounds it could be addiction it could be harm in relation just you know there's a million ways to suffer um but they're sunk they feel sunk and it's that sense like I can't do it. Like, I can't do it. I can't make the changes I need to make. I can't. Or the work, the even harder, like this debilitating cycle of like trying and failing. Um, I, you mentioned earlier, like two steps forward, a hundred steps back, those hundred steps back. Ah, so that, that cycle can be really defeating. And so how do you counsel people that are kind of right there? It's in the try. It's in the try. It's in the, the want to, the try. It's just, it's messier than they wanted. It's harder than they thought. It's lo- It's taking longer than they expected. Um, the setbacks are disappointing. Um, and then we just go, well, I just can't, you know, I'm hopeless. I'm some, I don't have it. So what, what do we do right there? What do we do? What, what do we reach for? What do we, what should we know? And I'm smiling because this was this was the turning point in my in my professional development, because it's like I, as Brit, can't sell anybody on why you should keep going. Like my story is powerful. But why should you believe me? I have that like, where is it? That picture of the nervous system in the back on my wall Mm. in my office. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put your faith in me. You don't have to put your faith in what people say. If you and I are having this conversation, you have a brain guess what? Your brain is the same as mine is the same as everyone else. And people who are way smarter than I am have studied this and have figured out that it is science that you are not stuck in your, like your brain is constantly learning and growing and changing. The brains that we are in now are not the same brains we're going to have next year, next month, next week, and let alone in five years. Mm -hmm. So don't put your faith in who you are, even though you should, and eventually we'll get there. But where's the starting place? You're a human with a brain and a central nervous system. You don't need to be a neuroscientist to know like a neuroscientist to know if you have a brain you can still change assuming you have access to your basic needs and resources and you're not like (laughs) subject to oppression and all that but like because that that's important but if you have a brain there is still hope for you because you do not have the one brain on the planet that is hopelessly stuck in this way when people say this is just who i am i'm like no that's not neuroscientifically even accurate because who Mm. you are is going to change you can remap how your patterns are wired. You can remap your habits. I mean, I used to sit in my car, chain smoking Marlboros, drinking Mountain Dew and eating gas station, like those like roller awfulness. Totally. That was that was my daily. It is no longer my daily. And it's not hard for me now to not do that because our brains can change and grow and remap and rewire. But we're not taught that. We're not taught, hey, you have a brain. You're right. Here's how you drive it. It's insane to me that we're not taught this as little yeah. kids. Like, hey, buddy, you have a brain and you can teach your brain things. And if you don't like what it learned how to do, we can untrain it and retrain it. That is so true. That's so good powerful. News. Yes. 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 That's so empowering. You are, this is now speaking my language. What has always moved me in any way, whether um, uh, something to move my heart towards something, um, to convince me like this requires your energy or your effort or your attention, or um, this is something to pay, is facts. 
I love it. Give me data. Like, give me the data. That's what my brain wants. It wants, like, it give give me the like, give me the history lesson, and then I'm on board. And so, when you start talking neuroscience, I'm just like, look, you're so right. Don't believe a therapist. Believe your own body. Yeah. Believe what science says. Like, this is real. We literally are not stuck. We literally are not. Not stuck and not crazy. And again, with this motivation, procrastination, why am I not doing the thing I want to do? Again, you didn't learn, not you, but people didn't uh-huh. learn that you have a nerve in your brain that when it gets overwhelmed, it shuts you down. It's like, it's called the freeze response. And a body and a brain in a freeze response isn't going to do a damn thing. And that's not a lazy issue. That's a neuroscience. Your brain is so scared good. and we can work with it, but we don't know these things because we're not taught them. So I am just uh-huh. militant about people knowing no, you have a brain and it has a gas pedal and a brake pedal and an emergency brake. And if any of those things are out of whack, you're going to feel crazy, but you're not. Mm, I love hearing you talk like this. I realize this is a complex question and it would, it lacks context and specificity and it's probably impossible, but let's just take that wonderful truth that it is possible to relearn, to reimagine, to retrain our thoughts and our responses and our habits What would you say generically, it don't have to just be that, but are some of the earliest steps to begin that work, the work of, okay, okay, if I'm not physically and biologically stuck, then what are possibilities for me? What are, what are some levers I can begin to pull, um, to move myself into a healthy, to retrain my brain, to give it new ways to think? I love that question and everyone hates the answer that I'm about to give because it's so not sexy. It's uh, so not insta yeah. shiny. Like yeah. it, it's not, it's not fun. Like here's the trick. True. Yeah. Yeah. What is yeah. it? And it works and no one believes me at first and then they get mad and then eventually they do it and they're like, oh yeah, this works. I'm like, yeah, huh? And again, I didn't come up with this. This is science and I learned it and now I teach it, but it's not like the world according to Brit. So yeah. stop asking why questions. I if really you want like to get unstuck and every, you know, the whole, like we need to have our why that's for later. If you are sitting in whatever pit, whatever flavor pit that you are stuck in, do not ask, why is this happening? Why am I like this? Why will spin you? Why oh, will cement good. you to the yeah. ground? Instead say, what are three people, places, or things that I could do, utilize, lean into right now, not tomorrow, not next week, not after mm-hmm. I buy all the gear and all the yeah. books and all the clothes. What can I do right now of those three choices and then do it and then do that again? And mm. if you can't get to a yes with yeah. your first list of three, I'm going to go to the gym. Like, no, you're not. No, I'm not. It's like, I'm going to quit doing drugs. No, I wasn't. Let's mm. go down all the way down. Pick three people, places or things. Find one. Yes. The second you say yes to anything you're now in motion and you are no longer inert and do it again and do it again and save the why for once you're up and running everyone wants to start with why i love the analysis i love diving into the abyss of the psyche like let's do it but not at step one not at mile one i have a dear friend Mm -hmm. who's an ultra marathon runner nicole whiting and she says don't solve a mile 26 problem at mile two mile two don't ask why ask what Come up with three choices, pick one and go. No one wants to do that. I love that. Actually, that feels like a relief. Why is um, it just you're just frozen and there might not be an answer or one that's satisfying, at least. What's um, going to change? Yeah. Yeah. What's going to change? And in the meantime, you're still there. Um, can I ask you what that looked like for you when you were, when you were in the car with the marble, with the dog, the, the clothes on your back, um, what did it look like for you to begin getting down the, down the road? So it's so funny. And the why question really is who can I blame? Like, why is this happening? I love that question. You know, Mm. like throw out the why. For me, I actually remember I was in the 12 step program early in my recovery. And one of my yeses was get a sponsor. Such a judgmental bitch. I'm like, 
I don't like her and she doesn't yeah. have this. I'm like, I just needed someone I could call yeah. every day to be honest with. And I remember I had come off of like a four day meth bender and mm. all of the really awfulness that comes along with being love and sex addicted and meth addicted at the same time. And mm. I would, this was probably one of my closest times to suicide. I had come mm. and I called her up and I, she's like, Britt, when was the last time you had eaten? I'm like, mm. ah, she's like, what's in your fridge? I had like a bunch of moldy food and like a yo play. And this woman talked to me through eating the damn yogurt literally spoonful by spoonful i'm yeah. huddled in the corner and she's like put the spoon in the yogurt now put uh. the yogurt in your mouth and just having like a few little you know mm. bits of nourishment even just that when you've been deprived anything is going to be like water to a desert mm. That was one of those little shifts. It's, again, I'm not going to Instagram, like I'm going to live tweet. I'm eating my yogurt after four days of blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's little yeses like that. If she had said to me, now get up and journal. It's like, oh, no, totally. No, get up and meditate, like F off. But eat that damn yogurt and put some food in your body. I could say yes to that. I could say yes to that. When I was in the car with my cigarettes mm -hmm. and my dog, one of my yeses was don't call him right now. Like, don't put, put your phone in the trunk and just get through the next hour. If you have to chain smoke, if you have to binge eat corn dogs, do not call that man right now. Fine. For just an hour, not forever, for an hour. And those tiny little yeses compound very That's rapidly. Right. And before you know it, you're going. But if I had said to myself, what's wrong with me that I have to be helped to eat a yogurt and why am I such a blah? I wouldn't go anywhere. So yeah. we have to find little micro yeses. Those are what build the giant steps that we want towards these awesome, amazing lives that are possible, mm. but they're made up of little unsexy yeses. It's so true. I love the idea of micro yeses. Mm -hmm. They just don't feel like much. And mm -hmm. it just, but they do, they add up. They add up. I um, was at the bottom of the ocean a couple of years ago. I was in that place where my, like mom was having to say, eat a bite. Like, can you just eat this bread? Uh, it was like that low. And um, I had enough smart people in my life. Essentially tell me what you just said. Here's a little series of a very tiny, tiny, tiny little baby little things to do. I'm like, put my feet in the grass. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe that'll fix my broken life. Like maybe that'll put my family back together. Oh, okay. And I'll walk barefoot in my yard. Um, and they add up. They, they add do. up. They, they add do. up. And Those yeses signal to me to you like you can keep a little tiny little baby promise to yourself. Just a tiny little thing. You can do something good for you, and then you can do another one, and then you can yes. do another one. And it's just it's crazy how it kind of you grab your own self. And you pull your own self up little by and little teeny the by science, teeny. The science backs this up too. It's like each of those tiny micro yeses is a little micro dose of a happy chemical in your brain, right. Exactly. right? Like a happy micro dose of a good chemical is still preferable to the cascade of negative chemicals when we shame ourselves. Like, yeah. again, it's not yeah, like, let's all hold hands and smile and skip barefoot through the grass. It's there's neuroscience to back up what happens when you put a barefoot in the grass. I didn't care about then. I didn't want to know why it worked. I just knew science says if you do this, it will help you. Okay, cool. Done. All right. right. Let's do that. What's next? What's next? Follow what's the data. Yes. yes. Follow right? the data. Follow it's the data. true. It's true. It'll work almost without your um, affirmation. Like you could just almost do it under duress. Fine. I did that. Fine. I will breathe. Oh, I will breathe. <laughs> Is everybody happy? I'm doing breathing exercises. Sure enough, my central nervous system, which is quiet itself. I mean, it's just true. It's that time of year again. How in the world that we are staring the holidays right in the face. If you've been following along for a while, you know that every year I share some of my favorite things for the holidays that I'm buying for my own friends and family from incredible companies that give back, from brands that are women owned to social enterprises doing the most good. And let me tell you, if you've ever shopped my gift guide before, you have made a difference. Because you've shopped, you've changed lives. It's that simple. I mean, I continue to hear beautiful stories from so many of these businesses. These companies are able to survive and thrive and expand because of your support, like this community's support. That's why I am so excited and delighted to bring you my favorite things gift guide this year. But we're doing it a little different. 
I'm focusing on six companies that I adore. But instead of just telling you about the products this year, I want you to hear the stories directly from the women whose lives have been changed because of you shopping from the gift guide. You can watch those stories over on jenhatmaker.com slash gift guide. Every story is different, and I hope you find them just as precious and important as I did. I think you'll be even more inspired by the life-changing work these companies are doing. Included in the mix are our friends at Thistle Farms. We put together a Renew and Revive gift set, a fantastic gift for literally anyone, and of course, their candles. You will love Treehouse and Company's Holiday Spice Box, inspired by my little cookbook. It includes like gourmet salt and pepper, Texas taco seasonings, fierce spice, the cutest, and more. Over at Wagon Company, my Caffeinate These People pack includes fierce free and fire blends with delicious tasting notes like milk chocolate and toasted marshmallow and dried cherry. I mean, it is good stuff. Like I almost don't want to put my fake creamer in it. I curated a whole bunch of fun gifty gifts from Aspen Lane for you to shop, including dish towels with the best quotes. Really good stuff for anybody on your list. And of course, our go-to for all things style is Able. Handbags, apparel, jewelry, all the things. Um, uh, by the way, not a bad gift to give yourself either. Finally, you guys, we wrap it up with Hun's Honey, which is this incredible company that you are going to love. They have the best hot honey and also amazing honey-based bath and skincare products. And of course, with all of them, when you use my code for the love, you save tons of money when you shop. So show these rock stars some love and shop all the goodness over at jenhatmaker.com slash gift guide. These businesses have made a massive difference and so can you. We have to pick up your own personal story from the car to you being right this minute on my podcast with a book coming out as a trauma specialist. <laughs> Ma'am, you journeyed, you went a few miles down the road. Like this is a complete like reversal of, of what you had experienced up to that point. Like mm -hmm. how did this happen? How are you, how are you sitting there with your hair, like in a little braid and like nice bookshelf behind you. Like it's pretty exciting story. Yeah. I'm not mad about it. And the yeah. thing is, I, I'm not a toxic positive person. I don't believe everything happened for a reason. I, no, like, no, no, me neither. No never. puke. No. However, I, it, again, if you have the biological and physiological ability to make choices, that's my big disclaimer on all of this. And yes. I was fortunate that I did, Yeah. you know, I was really stubborn. I was like, I refuse to have this be my story. And like, I don't think God gave me more than I can handle. That's crap. That's right. Perhaps it's possible to like alchemize all this crap and turn it into something. And honestly, I, I wish I could say, I just wanted to help people. And I, I love doing that, but that's, I'm so much, much a, more of a selfish person than that. I just yeah. love this information. And I'm like <laughs> evangelistic about the brain now. I'm like, no, don't you understand you have a brain? And if you know how your brain works, you yeah. can drive your life. So that's sort of what drove the work. And again, I was fortunate enough to have resources and yeah. some bananas dissociative ability where I could be in school and be destroying myself at the same time. Mm. And I don't know why that was. It just kind of happened. So what does your life look like right now? <laughs> it's very peaceful. I'm a New Yorker yeah. born and bred. And I tell people I live in Kansas on purpose. And people <laughs> think I'm nuts. It's, you know, I've, I, I've curated my life where it's yeah. peaceful. I've called yeah. my friend circle down. So there's no drama. There's no high conflict. I've chosen not to have children. So that yeah. does make things a lot easier. Makes it super uh, calm. I'll tell you um, that right now. Like mm -hmm. a whole, like my heart goes out to moms. Because there's a <laughs> lot of choices that are not available available when you have little humans to take care right. of and love and raise right. um, my life now works I, I've Ooh. I'm married to a normie which is bizarre to me a normie so two years yes. he's a total normie it's weird he eats when he's hungry he sleeps when he's tired like he manages <laughs> his anger like what who are you I had to I drink a lot of vodka in the early dating stages because I'm like uh, I don't know how to tolerate normal my therapist <laughs> is like this is this is a good sign if you felt familiar with this person that would be bad familiarity does not always mean healthy so life's good 
I just think that's fantastic. I <laughs> love that. <laughs> How dare he eat when he's just hungry? It's weird. Sir, where are what? your weird? Where are your toxic habits, Lord? Um, so let me just, if I can, if I can ask you this, um, I'm I'm thinking about the person listening who is it's before the before, like kind of going, uh, like you mentioned at the top of the hour, um, well, my parents loved me. Um, or, I mean, this happened and it was bad, but you know, I, you know, I, I'm, I got, I'm over it or whatever. And there's this like sense of unseeing what's true in a life. And so, um, I, I wonder how you would say, how you would answer, like, how is it, that any given person could recognize something in our past, in our story, in our childhood, whatever, um, that is actually affecting how we're doing our present life negatively. Like mm. um, it sometimes is hard. Just saying that out loud is hard for a lot of people. I have an exercise that speaks to that because Great. it is. And I've re- I wrestle with people in therapy all the time. And it's not like, no, your childhood was bad. But mm. multiple truths can be simultaneously true. And You're again, right. we're not taught that. So I have people, I call this the also true exercise. Whatever the thing you're telling yourself. I didn't have it that bad. My mom loved me. They did the best they could. Bloody, I had to make the list of all the things. And then on one side. And then write also true. And then put the equal and opposite. Mm, that's good. What's true? My mom loved me. Also true. There were times where she yelled and did not meet my needs. I. What's true? I had everything I need. Also mm. true. There were times I felt lonely and disconnected. And if you make an also true list, that, that helps to temper the impulse to defend mm. and not go there. It makes it safe because there's room for multiple realities at once. So good. It's so true. We are, I think, taught that binary thinking is appropriate. And that really does keep us from going one inch below the surface generally. Yeah, um, yeah that's so, so useful. So um, last question here. Um, I'm thinking about shame. Um, it's just such a block. It's such a block to the work and to healing and to recovery. And um, there's, okay, like, you know, you just think I've gone in this direction for too long. Like I've wasted too much time or um, the the pain that even I created out of my own pain is now so catastrophic that like this just, and you could just sink down. And so how... How do you suggest that we just genuinely forgive ourselves like mm-hmm. and continue to forgive ourselves um, that we are even from this point on not going to make perfect and right choices? That's not a, that's not life. That's not real. Nobody does that. Um, and we may indeed have we may actually have made choices that hurt ourselves and others. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and what do you have any counsel around getting over that hurdle mm-hmm. of just self-hatred? Mm-hmm. So the self-forgiveness thing is so beautiful and so crucial, and it is damn near impossible in the early stages. So I put the mm. self-forgiveness thing in the why bucket, like we'll get there later. I don't need you to like yourself, accept yourself, forgive yourself, or what oh, What we need great. to start with is let's get the mythology and the lie stories off. So oh, when you say good. something like, it's too late for me, get used to questioning, okay, how true is that? Again, you don't have to like yourself. You don't have to forgive yourself. I harmed people. I caused an immense amount of chaos for people when I was spinning. Oh my God, I am a terrible person and it's all hopeless for me and no one's ever going to love me. Okay, I don't need to like myself, but I can logically look at that and go, okay, how how true is that? There's a mm. little bit of truth. Some relationships I did burn to the ground in a completely not fixable way. That's yeah. I get to grieve that. Yeah. But how true is the story I'm telling myself is Mm. such an easier on-ramp than I just need to love myself because you can't love yourself while you're mired in these lie stories that are sitting on. It's like your pain is enough. You don't need to add 
stories to the pain to compound it. So again, make an inventory, make a list of everything you're telling yourself and then say on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being absolute truth and one being total bull, how true is it? That's and good. if it's anything less than 10, we can work with that. And then we'll mm. get to self-love and forgiveness and all of that beautiful higher level stuff later. But like, that's a mile 26 problem, trying to love and forgive yourself. But we try to do it at mile one and then go, what's wrong with me that I can't forgive myself? That's not the stage of the process we're at. Let's start by getting rid of the lie stories. And that'll make it a lot easier to get to self-love and compassion and forgiveness later. That is fantastic. That is really good advice and very liberating. Um, just to be able to know you don't have to get that done first. Oh, no. Or second or fifth. <laughs> It'll and come. In fact, you probably can't. No. So, yeah. Um, that is incredible. Can you just talk a little bit about your book? Um, because if it's packed with this kind of information, every living person should read it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So the book's called The Science of Stuck. And I called it The Science of Stuck instead of The Neuroscience of Bloody Blah, Blah. It's like, let's just make this really, when I was overwhelmed and stressed and burnt out and addicted, I did not need complicated multi-level stacks of books to like, no, I'm not going to read those. No, I'm not going to journal. No, I'm not going to do those things. I needed one book that cherry picked all the most important pieces of information. Because again, when you're trying to get moving, you don't need all the information. For you sure. just need, it's like driver's ed. Like you don't need to be, an, you don't learn how to be an auto mechanic in driver's ed. We're 16 years old learning yeah. how to drive vehicles, like basics, gas, pedal, brake, mm. pedal, turn signal. So my book is really, here are the bottom line basics. I wrote it in a way that if you want a deep dive, I've laid out like breadcrumb trails for you to follow. But if if you're overwhelmed and you just need like, what are some basic tools for helping my family? What are basic tools for anxiety? What are basic tools for addiction? What are basic tools for motivation? That's this book because it didn't exist when I was mm. going through it and that pissed me off. So mm. I decided to write it. It's so helpful. I, that is exactly what is useful when you are in the thick of it. I, I, I can't have a, a, a thesis on one little idea out of the whole idea. I, I can't, can't do it. Um, condense it down for me, bullet point it and give it to me in digestible pieces. Yes. Um, I am so, I'm grateful that you wrote that. And I, I can only imagine the feedback on it. I mean, it must just be amazing. It's pretty cool. And like yeah. I took I took very, very smart neuroscientist information and turned it into cartoons. I, I actually emailed one of them. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I hope you don't feel disrespected. But I turned <laughs> your 40 year career into this cute little swing set on the playground to explain how this works. And he was lovely about it. But it's been the best feedback I've gotten, which I, is like I take in and I appreciate so much is when people go, oh, my God, I'm really not crazy. Life's just hard for all of us. Yeah. It really is. And there's still, even in the hardest, worst, most unfathomable scenario, a way forward. There just is. We're weirdly resilient. It's shocking sometimes what we can endure and overcome. Really shocking. Um, and so, okay, this is fantastic. And I cannot wait to put your work in the hands of my people. Can you please just tell my community where to find you? Where's the best place to have access to your work and your resources and your leadership and all the things, socials, all of it? Thanks. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram with boundaryless behavior where I'm on there all the time. So DM me, let's chat, let's meet at Brit Frank and Brit has two T's and you can buy the book wherever. And my website is scienceofstuck.com. I'm going to have all that for you, listener, all of it in one little roundup, just a one-stop shop for all things Brit Frank. Um, Thank you. Gosh, I really loved this conversation. This uh, was incredible. And I am, my brain is spinning on several things that you've said. And I kind of want to get off this call and I want to like text a couple of my friends and be like, listen to this, like really, really good. Thank you so much for kind of bringing your story to bear and alchemizing it into something just so good for the rest of us. Um, I mean, what a wonderful turn of events. <laughs> um, for us. And so, okay. I'm just mm. so delighted to meet you. Any way that I can just ever be a, be a support to your work. Mm. Um, will you, I just want you to let me know. Um, thank you. So I you're really welcome. appreciate that is incredibly generous. And I will, I, part of my practice is taking people up and believing them when they say things like that. So I like that. 
I I will challenge myself to say yes to that. I love that. So, okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Britt. Mm. Okay. I I hope that that encouraged you. I really do because it did me. And um, she's a good leader through the pain and the suffering of life. And then it's recovery. Um, if you go to jenhatmaker.com underneath the podcast tab, I will have everything about this episode. I'll have the link, the show notes, and then I will put links up to all of Brit's things, um, her socials, her book, her website, everything. Cause some of it wasn't uh, by her name. And so yeah, that could be a one-stop shop for you, but um, start following her. Like what a good dose of like honest, grounded, practical truth every single day. So, uh, I'm going to think about this episode for quite a while. Really, really useful to me too, you guys. And so we love you and we want this podcast always to be that for you, this encouraging, empowering space where we're connected and we share our pain, but we also share our triumphs together. We want you to know that you are indeed normal, like whatever that means, as normal as any of us are, like we, you're not the only one who has suffered or made horrible choices or been stuck. Like we're all in, we're all in it together here. And so we hope that all the guests that we continue to bring you serve you well. That's, I think that's our, that's our through line. So, um, with all my love to this podcast community, see you next week. Mm -hmm.